answering the question, should we take our money out of the bank? Dun, dun, dun. Here's our opinion on that. Um, this is not 1929. The setup that the government has and the banking system has now is not even close to what we had 100 years ago when the stock market crashed and we had the Great Depression. Could we still have a Great Depression? Yes, we could. But it's not going to be the same as 1929. I would say money-wise, the, the money doesn't have any value other than what the government gives it right now. It's not tied to anything. the gold standard or anything like that. So <clears throat> if you have money under your pillow and the government is basically printing more money, they're borrowing money that they don't have and adding it to the debt, that reduces the value of the money that's under your pillow also. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter if the money is in the bank or not in the bank. It's still going to lose its value. What would be good is to, like if you have a mortgage on your house, pay it off because if the economy completely goes, then you would at least own your house. And yes, we know you will still have to pay taxes and insurance. But once again, it's a lot cheaper to pay your taxes and insurance for $500 a month than $2,500 a month with a mortgage on top of that. Right. And, you know, if you could put it, if you have it in a bank account that has no interest, you could put it in something else that might have a little bit of interest. But people were also asking about buying bonds. I would not buy bonds because bonds lock up your money for a long time at a tiny interest rate. Yeah. So I I would say the best thing would be pay off your house. Get if all there's your something off, major yeah. that you're going to need, like don't just go out and buy stuff. There would be more value in certain things like your house than uh, in the cash. So if you know you need tires, no, don't just replace tires because you, you could replace tires, but like if you know you need them, then this would be a good time. <laughs> Or I would get those things done that you could spend your money on that will be of value to you, like tires. Because the money will... Dental care. Yeah. Food. Because if something goes wrong with the money thing, you have at least gotten something of value with it. Yeah. Yeah. Now... But uh, I wouldn't take it out of the bank. If, it, if, if you have money in the bank and you don't know what else to do with it, I would just leave it there for now. It's not going to be any more valuable in a jar in your house. The thing is, if the economy totally tanks, and it probably will, nothing is going to be worth anything. Even gold and silver. I know there are people that say invest in gold and silver. You can have a little bit of that, that if you want. But honestly, I think buying things like wine would probably be more valuable than gold and silver. I'm not recommending that. I'm just saying that you would be able to trade better things for things like alcohol and medical supplies and stuff like that if the if it totally tanked if this if it just totally tanked now we don't know if it's going to totally tank or not the government could do something to try and pull it out honestly we are so deep in debt now that there's no way there's there's really no normal way out of this the only way that we're going to get out of the mess that we have for our debt in america is to have some sort of radical change in our system. They're saying that they're gonna do it so it'll help global warming and it will help with trafficking and it will help with drug trafficking and all this kind of stuff. Well, you know, they can say that, but what it boils down to is the government wants to have control of your money. And so a digital system is, is a way for them to do that. So the thing with gold and silver is, Tara said buying things to trade. That's if there's like, if it's like complete collapse, um, Mad Max kind of world. But the thing with gold and silver, because people always ask about that is, gold and silver is a way that people will, they'll buy it and hold it because if the, if, if a, the economy basically reboots into some different kind of um, money, or if the economy goes really bad for a while and then comes back, or if you move to another country and buy theirs, then it makes sense to have the gold and silver. The thing with the gold and silver is its value could go down though when you buy it. So you shouldn't just go buy it without knowing what's going on with gold and silver. Um, it won't help you if you have to trade things, so you're not gonna be using it for cash. It would just be the kind of thing that you, you set your money aside in this because you believe the economy is going to get better. In the United States right now, it's looking like the economy is going to be spiraling down in any case. And at the moment, depending on what they do, it, it might not completely go into the trash. But right now, there are just the payments on interest for the United States national debt is almost 10%. And the amount of debt is more than six times the income of the country, annual income. So if you imagine your job, if you had 
like say you have a hundred thousand dollar job and you had six hundred thousand dollars worth of debt so the u.s probably isn't going to get out of debt in our lifetimes i wouldn't imagine but if the u.s starts to spend more wisely and not spend more each year than we actually have things could improve but what i would suggest is it's probably not going to totally collapse in the real near future but uh, the value of the money will be going down most likely so if there's a way that you can you know pay off your house or use the money for things that uh, use some money for things that you know are going to need to be taken care of soon this may be a good time. well and the truth is nobody knows what's going to happen yeah nobody really knows. it could completely collapse and we have nothing like a mad max world i mean it, it could happen and right now but it also could not happen so who knows nobody knows that's why you just want to set yourself up in the best position possible so that no matter what happens, you're just set up in a good position, as good as can be. Yeah. And right now the mood of, the prevailing mood in the government, I think, is to just keep spending money that we don't have and that's gonna cause things to get worse. There's, there are some people that wanna do, that wanna turn that around, but it may or may not happen. But like Tara said, if you're prepared, just make sure you're prepared as much as you can be. So how do you prepare? Well, first of all, I would get your house paid off immediately. I would then get your cars paid off and then your credit cards paid off and I would worry about your student loans last because if the government defaults, those will probably all default also. Now, this is not financial advice. We are not financial advisors. We are just mom and dad, Joe Schmo. <laughs> and, but this is what we would do if we were in that situation. So we're just telling you what we would do and what we are doing in that situation we're making sure we have a good stockpile of food. We're making sure that we're getting our house paid off. We have no other debt. We are getting things taken care of, like our dental needs, any medical needs, um, the car. We're keeping it in good repair. That's about all you can do. Get yourself a good cookbook like our Dining on a Dime cookbook. <clears throat> Learn how to cook. Learn how to fix your own cars. Learn how to repair things around your house. Get these things learned now so that if you have a need later you are able to do those things yep so that's our advice visit us at livingonadime.com go watch this video next we'll see you guys next time